Having finished the structure of our little power station, we now have to install the equipment we have so far and get it up and running again. Hi. Oh, hi, Anne. What are you up to? I'm just modifying the wind turbine controller here to fit the gauge because the gauge that's on it doesn't do anything, only tell you the voltage. So I'm fitting the gauge that we had as a separate unit into this control unit with the little hole sensor and everything there. It looks nice and tidy like mm. that. It looks just like the one above. These universal panel connectors are very handy. We've got a whole box of them for about 25 quid. They fit most gauges of wire. All you have to do is crimp them around, solder them on, and then everything is plug and play. box full of paper and the important stuff right at the bottom of the box now two one meter long bus bars for 17 quid a piece nothing wrong with that you just have to drill them yourself I think I'll have to take all these batteries back out again that's a lot of terminals to cross if I do happen to drop it To be so careful to make sure I don't tip the spanner off both rails at the same time or off one of the battery terminals below for that matter I'll create a nice little short circuit now there we go so that's the whole battery bank now up and connected two things we're doing differently this time is I fitted a kill switch over here and a little gauge just to keep an eye on things and that way I can just switch the whole bank off with the turn of a key um, second thing is we've connected each 24 volt pair directly to the bus bars instead of having them running in a big long chain in a bank. We found that last time when we did that there was 0.2 of an amp drop as you'd go down along the bank from heading from the positive side to the negative side which resulted in the batteries in the middle not getting as much of a charge and pulling the entire bank down. All in all this whole thing adds up to 27 kilowatts which is not bad. Now I know lead acid 50% discharge so really we've got 13 and a half kilowatts usable but when you consider the price you know compared to lithiums which can only be discharged around maybe 70 or 80 percent before you start doing damage to them each one of these top batteries only costs 120 quid to replace and um, you know and I can run half an hour in the road to Waterford grab one out of parts depot and be back here within the hour you know and um, getting a replacement lithium would be three to four times the cost at least and I'd be waiting probably a couple of days to a week to get it. So continue on with the rest of it now. Okay, that's the wind turbine connected. Last of all then we'll just connect in the generator input. All connected up and ready to go. Doesn't look like much when you see it like that. But that's the beauty of the all-in-one units. Everything is done in the one unit. It's not like the Victron stuff, for example, where you have to buy a separate unit to do each job and then you've got to have cables between them all. And For the same price as a single Victron unit, you get the all-in-one that just does everything. Okay, you want to see? Yeah. Ooh, fancy. You want to do the honours? How do I do that? Right, first thing you have to do, turn the key, then flick the switch, flick the other switch, and push the button. You're going to have to write this down somewhere. Okay, go do it, go do okay, it. Okay, this thing. Turn the key, Put. you have to push and turn. Which way? Clockwise. Push in and turn clockwise. Okay. It's alive. Flick the switch. This one? Yep. Flick the other switch. Turn on the inverter. Oh, it turned itself on. I didn't do that. Oh, we didn't turn it off then. No, it's got feed from the panels up on the roof. Okay. I mean, it's 8 o'clock. There's not much sun and it's cloudy, but... 
It's live. Everything's coming to life. The batteries are 100 cents. They're not actually though. 24 yeah. points. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that one over there was on. <laughs> I didn't know you looked here. 25.5. Just shows the discrepancy in that built in Ista Breeze gauge. Battery gauge says 100%. Inverter is on. Eight o'clock in the evening, so we're not going to have any power. Yeah, nothing coming in from the solar, but we're at twenty-five point four. But yet the Ista breeze gauge says twenty-four point eight. They, that was always off. That was never right. The correct reading twenty-five point four also matches. 25.3. All of that should be in conduit and um, it'll look so much better because you wouldn't have any of the exposed wires looking like the map of the London Underground, you know? Yeah, I think so. But yeah, look, it's neat and tidy and it works, you know? And even the generator's all connected up and it's got its fancy exhaust going out the side and all that. Um, with the generator we've got it hooked into the inverter so we can recharge that but it also has its own set of sockets on the side if we want to plug directly into it. Um, the wind turbine, obviously we're waiting to get the turbine itself back up and running. Mm. And because it's the hour of the evening that it is, we've got nothing coming in from the solar. So we'll get proper readings on everything in the morning. And um, overnight we can use up what's in the batteries. Because it's saying that they're full, um, even though they're not quite, they probably need balancing out. So um, we'll use them up overnight and that way in the morning we can get a whack of juice in and get better readings from um, what we're getting in from the panels. What's the weather like tomorrow? Not sure. No, I'm going to have to check that. Not sure. Yeah, but okay. The trip switch is live over there as well. Okay. Check it out. People, have a look. That's the 220 volt AC. Up and running. Next yeah. thing I have to do is set up some lights in here. That is one thing that's badly needed because, as you can see, like it's not far off 9 o'clock now and it's kind of dark. So we can set up some lights in here. That we had lights in the other one, sure. <laughs> I know, yeah, it was 24 bulbs, <laughs> light bulb, like, do you know? And it worked. It, yeah, look, it worked, it worked, but it'd be, nice to have, it'd be nice to have a proper like, switch, like, yeah, there. Yeah, I know, like, spotlights. Little by little, little by little. Sure, what can I say? I had a lot of wall space, so I figured I'd fill it up with some artwork. Now, all joking aside, I went into this build knowing that this was going to be temporary because this is on its way. It's the 11 kilowatt, 48 volt, all in one, big brother to this unit here. It should be with us in the next few days. So over the next week, two weeks, we'll rearrange the setup here into 48 volts and I will be using conduit, don't worry. Realistically, what I've done here is I've proved the point that low budget DIY off grid power is available to everyone with a couple of days worth of battery backup as well. This 27 kilowatts of battery bank cost us 1,260 euros over the course of a year, two years, primarily because we got the larger battery second hand, which saved a lot of money. The total cost of everything you see here. So five kilowatts of solar panels, 1.6 kilowatt wind turbine with the mast, the foundation, the three kilowatt inverter, the little controllers, all the switches, fuses, and the generator. The total cost of all of that was 6,250 euros, which again was over the course of two years. So it is achievable by everyone. And with prices falling now on solar panels and batteries, there's no better time to get started. So guys, thanks once again for joining me um, for this build. We recently passed 5,000 subscribers, which was great. And thank you to each and every one of you for doing that. Um, please do share the video on your social media and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, do take care of yourselves. And I'll see you then.